Hello, welcome to the Fabulous Picture Show and this special screening of Sleep Dealer. Can I please introduce the filmmaker? This is Alex Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this move. <laughs> Alex, where did you get the idea for your film? Uh, well, the idea came from the fact, I guess, first of all, that I'm a science fiction fan. I grew up, uh, you know, watching Star Wars and eventually Blade Runner, and I've always loved films about the future. And I started to realize that in science fiction, we've always seen the future of Los Angeles or of London or of New York, but we've never seen the future of a place like Lima or Mexico City and create a story about the future of the rest of the world. We hope you enjoy the film. We're going to talk to you in the Q&A. Thank you. Sleep Dealer is set in the Mexico of the near future. Le damos a los Estados Unidos lo que siempre han querido. Todo el trabajo sin los trabajadores. Rather than physically crossing borders, a far-flung workforce implants nodes into their bodies to perform mechanical tasks from afar. And scarce extortionate water supplies are guarded with lethal force. Well, look, if you're not making a purchase, Soldier Rudy flies remote-controlled drones, exterminating aqua terrorists. Hold on a sec. There's an intercept on this frequency. But when he mistakenly kills an innocent farmer, the farmer's son Memo goes on the run from a small Mexican village to the teeming border city of Tijuana. He finds well-paid but risky and soul-sapping work in a virtual factory. You up there? Yeah, you. Two, see, two. I need you down here to start welding. Along the way, he meets love interest Luth, the writer who uses Memo's stories to write memory-recorded articles, like blogs straight from her brain. No sabía qué decir, pero sí sé que esta tiene que ser la última memoria de la serie. Director-writer Alex Rivera's first feature conjures an imaginative new world, but one firmly grounded in current hot-button issues of scarce resources, globalization, economic migration, and more. Every night on Drones, we take you live to the front lines, where high-tech heroes use cutting-edge technology and blow the hell out of the bad guys. Many of the things that you dealt with in Sleep Dealer are, as you say, literally five minutes away. They are very much in the near future. A lot of the other films have dealt with another intergalactic world, thousands of years ahead. Do you like my American accent? It's very bad, isn't it? But you deal with something where we're going, oh my goodness, drones. So tell us about the drones that inspired your drones. <laughs> what really sets me off is the news, you know, is, trying to, is, is following what's happening to our world. And today, in the war that the U.S. is waging in Afghanistan and in Iraq, they're using drones where pilots stay on the ground. I think there's bases in Las Vegas and in Orlando, Florida, and they stay on the ground and then fly these remote control bombers. And they're bombing targets that they'll never be anywhere near. And they go home to have dinner with their families after a day of work. And this is, this is reality, but it feels like science fiction. Fire. Meet Rudy Ramirez. Me and my mom and dad were in the military, so I'm following in their footsteps. Rudy is part Mexican, and you realize that, that being so disengaged from what he was doing, that he's actually killing his own. You know, and I, and I gather you could, have, you could have made him, obviously, different racially, a different ethnicity, but you decided for him to be the same. I didn't want the film to be simplistic in terms of race, ethnicity, and to become a conversation about that. I didn't want it to be like the evil Americans are doing something to the hapless victims in the South. It's not about that. It's about structures in which we all are part. And so, yeah, it was important in, in, in my film to make the kind of enemy, the bad guy, the, the soldier, uh, the killer, to make him sort of part of the same ethnic stew that the whole film is set in. I killed a man. And we are so proud of you. You don't know what that man was going to do. Mm. And you don't know how many people you saved. The image that's in my mind that I thought was fantastic were the, the robots climbing on these skeletons of these enormous buildings and almost like they were human but being controlled by a human somewhere else.
a lot of science fiction that's about robots, what they like to do is show that the robots in the future want to kill people, right? <laughs> it's always about the, we needed robots to work, and then they rebelled, and then the robots decided to kill humanity, and so then Will Smith has to kill the robots. <laughs> and instead, I wanted to dwell on that first part about robots and labor. And so this idea that his spirit and his energy is giving life and giving thought to a machine seemed kind of like a very rich a metaphor for a lot of what's happening and what might happen. Vas a estar bien. Ayúdame a desconectarlo. ¿Estás bien? I really enjoyed the whole node thing, um, and I really felt slightly disturbed by the fact these people were, you know, punching into their arms and, and their backs, and just wondered um, how you came up with that. I like the idea of the connections going into their arms, the kind of part of your body that you work with. And um, so that was where the concept came from, was this very universal sci-fi idea that in the future, we won't be touching keys, we won't be using a mouse that clicks like this, that that's kind of pathetic, and eventually that will disappear and we will connect more profoundly with these machines. True Node, el mercado de memorias número uno del mundo. I hope it shows that technology is not bad. That's not my perspective. But technology, it's a battlefield. And it makes some people powerful. It makes some people invisible. But it can also be bent against itself, and it can bring hope. When you did the street scenes in Tijuana, it did look very much like the Blade Runner, maybe with the neon signs. I was just wondering if in the, those scenes there was anything you were putting in to play with those? Most of the locations are real and unaltered. We didn't have the budget to reshape the whole visual landscape in front of the camera. Cerca de la colonia donde vivía, en las afueras de la ciudad, estaban las infomaquilas, los sleep dealers. When Memo goes into the factory, what I wanted to do was again follow my research. And I had images of factories in China where computers are made, where iPods are made, and you saw these infinite rows of workers. So I had a, a, a set about 12 or 13 feet deep with four workers on either side, and that was all we could afford. So then the first thing we did was we stuck a mirror, right? The oldest trick in the book, but a giant mirror, we doubled the size of the set, and then in the computer doubled that. And so we were able to get what feels, I think, like a pretty big, a pretty big set, but for, you know, for practically no money. Muchacho, enchufate. Tu futuro empieza hoy. I enjoyed your film. I would like to see what you can do with a hundred million budget. <laughs> well, I, I would love to make bigger, bigger, a bigger version of this film or a larger film, but to me the important thing I is to make a film that's connected to the world, so long as they can be kind of crazy, bold, and connected to the politics uh, of the world we're living in. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Can we please thank you, the filmmaker? Thank you, guys. Alex Rivera. <laughs> His first mission, eliminate a terrorist intercept, which was spotted last night during a routine sweep of the southern sector. <laughs> and blow the hell out of the bad guys. From Mexican sci-fi to yet another unlikely combination of country and genre, get ready for some Danish kung fu. Fighter is a kung fu movie with a twist. What beauty are you? Black. Almost black. It isn't just that it's from Denmark or that its lead character, Aisha, is a young woman. Thank you. Thank you. It's that she's Turkish from a conservative Muslim family. In my country, in Denmark, it's, I mean, my generation is very much brought up with the follow your heart. You can do what you want. Here we go. But for a, a person with um, another ethnic background, it's it's much more you, it's much more difficult to to do that because the family ties. First time actor Semra Turan, a Danish martial arts champion, shares Aisha's background, but not all her problems. Very familiar to go here. What? Come back, David. Oh, here, you hear it here. The 
I didn't have the same restrictions as uh, Aisha, the character which I'm playing, has. Um, my family was very open for the things I was, I wanted to. Uh, I never had problems with training martial arts or with uh, which education I wanted and so on. I had a very free childhood. Now, if you're expecting some little Danish art film, the kung fu scenes might surprise you. The stunts and wire work were choreographed by Shan Gao of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon fame. Gao also plays Aisha's instructor. He came three months before we started shooting, and then we were supposed to only shoot for two months. Uh, but then, because it was so difficult for them to remember the choreographer, we had to stop and they, they rehearsed and then we go on. So we went on for half a year and he stayed the whole way through. We have a harness done and wires and um, our back has to be straight. And uh, there was uh, five or ten men pushing the wire and uh, we have to like follow their motions and make it seem so that we are doing the motion. Well, that's it for this fabulous picture show. Alex, thank you for bringing your world to our world. You're welcome. Thanks for having me in my world here. More sci-fi ahead, I hope. In the near future, I hope to. In the near future. I love it. I hope you join us on the next show. In the near future. Estos son los mejores nodos callejeros que se pueden conseguir. Pero todavía hay riesgo. Si hay un virus o un cortocircuito, la electricidad fluye hacia tu cuerpo a través de los nodos. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this film? I'd give this film a 10, definitely, because it deals with issues that I think are very close to all of our hearts. I love the fact that he, he, he's gone into uh, your everyday to day life and then used sort of like te technology within that. I think that mix of Having an entertaining film, technically very adept and artistic, and have a social message is really quite fantastic. It's made me like science fiction. It's made me love science fiction, actually. I really enjoyed that film. Mm -hmm.